Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's my turn to speak English with my accent. Sorry about that. And thank you to be to be here despite uh, Friday evening. I know it's uh, it's not so easy to come to to hear a lecture instead of going in a starting the weekend for sure. So I I will start with a short uh, presentation of my office. So because all the projects we we developed uh, or together with my two partners, Olivier Philippe and Michel Osler here. We have, as you said, uh, two offices, one in Paris and one in Germany. And we are mostly uh, working in, uh, in Europe, so, but partly in South America, in uh, Guyana, or uh, sometimes in the, the Middle East or uh, in China, but mostly in, in Europe. And we are uh, developing diff very different kind of uh, projects and, and scales. You can, so from the garden uh, to the master planning. And, but mostly, what's uh, the most important thing for me, it's uh, even before the, the plants, the vegetation, the living materials, which are for sure, very important for landscape architects. We start with uh, you, our office, it's called TER, T-E-R. So, but this word means tree in Latin, but also TER, so T-E-R-R-E, means earth. Yeah, so that's very important for sure for, uh, for us. The earth, the soil, the ground, that's the first material, so the, is it fertile or not? So it's, it's very important to, work, to start with the, this as a basis. But with the same uh, word, almost, we, we go to terrain in French. It's almost it's the same word in English, yeah? so a plot of land, as a, the terrain is a substratum. We say also terroir in French or in English also. And to the territory, the territoire in French. So that means with the same, almost with the same word, uh, both French, English, uh, means mater the material, but also a small scale of, so a small part of land, but also big land, like territory. But it means also, la terre means the planet, the earth, also in English. Yeah, so the, the global thing. So that's that's why maybe uh, landscape architects they has to work not only for gardens but at different scales. Yeah. So and it's very important even if it's only a garden to look around the garden to look at the horizon of the garden. That means you are even if you are uh, working for a small piece of land, you are you 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 need to. Uh, um, to call or to to look at other scales, and also that's why the that's because of the, the, the title of this lecture is a, we are working for territories in motion. We know that the the context is not a, a, a fix; it's not stable. So the context is unstable. It's a, we we speak about global change. This is a challenge for every one of us, or architects or landscape architects, to work with this uh, global change. The er erosion, so here you, you, you see that the same uh, earth or sand is here in motion because of the erosion, the wind, the rain, the flood. And I like this picture because you have uh, one uh, house uh, on the right. So we are working also for people. Yeah? So we have to, to develop ourselves in the, on this planet. Yeah? So we have to, to develop the human being and the uh, cities and, um, and to, in a, to accord them to the, to, to the climate and to the uh, geographical context. In, in, and then I would like now to develop different uh, points, like 
are we working uh, for the landscape uh, in the surroundings of buildings or could we have sometimes leading landscapes leading a, a global project for a district or for a, a big territory uh, are the landscapes only uh, visual directly visual or are they stratified I think they are stratified so they are they, we have several horizons, visible or invisible, and we have to work with them. We have to work with resilient landscapes. Yeah? So the, if it's after an industrial use, after um, it, the, the, the growth could come back, the vegetation could be resilient. We, have, we could also work with symbiotic landscapes, symbiotic with architecture, so use we could use the, we can use the architecture as a substratum and work on the roof of the uh, of the architecture we had a wonderful uh, uh, promenade we made a wonderful promenade with cornelia on the roof on the, uh, yesterday of the uh, of the visitor center yeah, of the botanical garden for example and very important thing also it's are the hydrological landscapes, the rivers, the water as main element. So leading landscapes, it's, is it a, a, something new? I don't think it's new, it's quite old. So for example, if you see the, this picture from, from Paris, Les Tuileries, so it's, you know the Museum of Le Louvre, it's quite an old uh, garden, and uh, the French uh, landscape architect, uh, André Le Nôtre, who uh, developed uh, the gardens of Versailles later, he was born there. His father was already the gardener of this garden, but he extended extend the, the garden. So you can see the, the main alley, the main axis, reaching the horizon, the, the hill, the hill of Chaillot. And today, on the top of the hill, you have the Arc de Triomphe, you know this. And this, uh, this alley is now, today, uh, the Champs-Élysées, so the main boulevard, the main avenue of Paris. That means with one system, one uh, of alleys, trees, uh, and a design, uh, we could also prepare uh, the extension of, of cities, yeah? so we, uh, the, the design of gardens uh, could be also the, the structure for the, um, the development of, of the city. And uh, in the 19th century, uh, Frederick Law Olmsted in the States, that's exactly what he did uh, with, the, with consideration for the topography, for the geography. Uh, so anticipating the future extension of the cities, he uh, spoke with many mayors, uh, authorities, and to develop uh, parks along the, in the valleys, for example, here in, uh, for the park system of uh, Franklin, uh, Franklin Park in Boston, as the future uh, structure of the city. So the landscape is not only uh, uh, there for the leisure or for promenades for the for our pleasure. It's also it, it is also a structure for the city. And uh, one of the first uh, projects of uh, Agence Terre was in uh, '94. In, uh, in, in, in South America, in, uh, in Guyana, French Guyana, we were asked here to, uh, to think about the future of this peninsula, maybe not as nice as your peninsula, <laughs> as Vancouver. I, I discovered that this city uh, only two, two days ago. Uh, mm -hmm. But here you have, like in Vancouver, uh, a lot of nature, even so it's only nature almost, except that this peninsula, you are between the ocean and the rainforest. And this is Cayenne, the city of Cayenne in white. And the question was, uh, could we, uh, how, 
the, how could we develop the, the cities? We have a high demography there. Um, you, you have the mangrove here moving every 30 years along the coast. It's a tropical uh, climate. You, you only have the, um, the topography, the hills are as a main orientation system here, before or today. And working with an hydrogeologue, we understood that in this peninsula you have three uh, communes. You see the borders between Cayenne, Rémire Montjoly, and Matoury. And this peninsula used to be um, actually uh, was separated almost in the middle, and we had an separated islands in the past. That means this geography has an history, his own history. And we could also, we can work with this history, focusing on exactly the, the, the middle part of the peninsula, which was the separation of the both entities. And this separation is today a, a march. Yeah, so with a canal in the middle, and the water is flowing one day in one direction, another day in the other direct direction, because of the wind. It's exactly at the same level as the, of the ocean. And instead of ignoring this part, because it's exactly where the, the border between cities, uh, be between communes, is, so this march is also the, this canal is the separation today, is the, the limit between one commune and another one. We decided to focus on this place here, this in-between space where filled uh, with uh, rainwater and uh, this march as the, yeah, the, maybe the starter of the new uh, urbanization of the, this peninsula. And during the dry season, it looks like that. So the, the wet season with, with the flood, it's the same place, it's totally different. It's a, it's a, the context is a in motion. Uh, we have the, the different periods. And uh, the idea was here to consider the march not as a bad thing, but as a, at the middle, the middle of the future city and to organize on both sides of this march new infrastructures, uh, retaining uh, the water, so uh, on both sides, the rainwater. In, uh, and, um, and in the middle, we have this, like a green river. Yes, it's a, this, uh, this march could be uh, considered like a green river with both sides, very urban sides, with different uh, places uh, urbanized. And the idea here is to uh, protect the top of the hills because you, we need the canopy there, we need the vegetation to, to, reta to retain the, the rainwater. And we cannot um, develop the urbanization in the march, for sure. So it, we are only, on the, in French, we say the piedmont. So in, uh, maybe, the, I don't know, in, in English. So we are in between, not on the top of the hill, not too low, but in, in this in-between space here. And then we can develop different districts facing each other on both parts of the of the Green River, the march. And then we can focus and start. It was only a master planning. And then we organized uh, competitions for uh, urban designers to start there, one, one place and another one uh, along this, uh, La Crique Fouillée, it's called, the, this, this site in the, with the three uh, uh, cities together. And then we have to work with stratified landscapes. That's a that's point that's very important for me. The, in, this stratification is because of the geography. So it's, 
For example, here we are in Denmark. We can see if we are up in the sky, looking down, we can see the glacial drifts. Because under the soil here we have the, the, the glacier, and because of the yeah, so maybe, maybe uh, hygrometry, so it's more humid yeah, along this, those lines here, and you, you think you see the glacier, you can see it through almost the, uh, the field. It's the same thing for historical traces here, uh, built. And the, the last picture is uh, in, in a field, it's still in Denmark. Uh, uh, this, um, this guy is so watering the, the field. He has always in the, at the same place in the middle of the field this dry, dry band remaining. Uh, and one day he wanted to, to see it. Why? W what is the... Uh, why is it still uh, dry here in the middle? And he found two meters uh, um, yeah, down, uh, like an old canal. Uh, we are in Denmark. It's a very old canal, with uh, so made by stones from the Vikings, and it's still uh, functioning. That means the water. It's it's a stratification of different soils, different strata and sometimes it's not natural sometimes it's it's a cross constructed things and uh, the water is a crossing element of every every stratum so in our projects every one of us are we are all working with those elements um, sometimes it's it's due to the to the architecture. For example, here in a, in Switzerland, it's a it's a garden. Uh, we made it with a, so architects of, uh, called Domino, uh, Swiss architects, and because of an uh, auditorium, uh, sunken auditorium, we developed here uh, different levels of, of garden, and a sunk garden garden in the middle, a, a patio. So here it's um, the main entrance. So you can see the, the different levels of the, of the projects here. The different levels are sometimes uh, solid, sometimes totally transparent, like the, the canopy here. And so we can have a, like a dialogue between uh, so th those different uh, levels of perception. Sometimes the landscapes are invisible, totally invisible, but very important for the city. Like here in Germany, uh, we were asked to develop, it's, it's called in German, uh, Landesgartenschau. It's, uh, it was the, the question to develop a park in, the, in this non-urbanized zone of the city, uh, of the in-between city, because we are here, we had to develop a park between two uh, so, to edge of the of cities here, and we we tried to find a, an argument to, for the parks, and the argument was underneath. It was in, in the underground, the water, thermal water. It's um, people. The main um, ec uh, the economy of those cities are, are is uh, about uh, thermal, the spa. You, you say spa, yeah. Uh, and if you, along this blue line, you have um, like a failure uh, in the underground and the thermal water is flowing in this, more or less in this blue line, along this blue line. And we try to, to make it slowly visible in that kind of landscape, very open landscape, agrarian landscape, uh, trying partly to uh, connect to start to connect through uh, paths, alleys, the two both cities. Sometimes we have to connect, despite of uh, natural uh, areas, nat nature uh, protected 
areas like here, so we have to, to be careful. And then uh, we uh, so designed like so uh, a path along this blue line, invisible blue line here, and reaching uh, one point which is uh, which has to be the one of the most important points in this big park, and it, which is uh, like a vertical connection with the underground. And the, the water crater was, uh, so the idea here to pump the thermal water, which is very deep here, and to create a, a space, a meeting space between visitors, people, and this invisible water. So you, you can see it's just like a well uh, going down here with a garden in, around it. You can go uh, to the first step, five meters deeper than the normal level, uh, go very close from it. Some people are waiting for something, and you have suddenly. Uh, so uh, we worked with one more times with. Uh, so it's like a big uh, fountain, but uh, it, it 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 works with um, the thermal water, which is pumped in this big uh, well. Yeah, so and then we have the pressure and it's like a geyser so, with different uh, different moments. Yeah. So sometimes the water is the, the, the invisible element and sometimes it's another element, it's a ge geographical element, sometimes it's a fossil element. It's a, the, the coal could be the argument to uh, to develop a dynamic. Here it was in a, a three-national region, uh, so-called, because we are here between Germany, the Netherlands, and uh, Belgium. And it's this is Europe, and we are in the in the north of Europe. Here, it looks very intense. Uh, but uh, by night, if we are, if, you, if we look at uh, with uh, this uh, sat satellite picture, if we go closer, it's very green, and it's not very clear wh what we have here. Yeah, so we we see the brown uh, color means urbanized. It's we have a sprawl there. You ha we have blue lines. The the mass, a, a river in the middle, but otherwise it's very uh, the sprawl. So it was not so easy to find one idea there, and it's quite a big piece of land. It's about uh, 200 kilometers from the from the left to the right here. Having uh, make, uh, having uh, making a tour in this region, we can see the. Uh, the past, the, the industry of the last century, they closed the mines. We can see different uh, uh, yeah, buildings, constructions, the canalized rivers, everything related to this industrial period of the last century. And it was very, uh, the first idea was to, to develop the the coal heaps, I think it's, it's called, like the black mountains, which are there. But it was diff very difficult to convince people to work together here, because sometimes if you try to work in a very big territory like this one, the people don't want to work together. Here, there, so we had uh, Dutch people, we, uh, they don't want to work with German people, for example, together because of many reasons, the last uh, world uh, war, for example, and it was very difficult and uh, with visible elements. So it, we couldn't find an argument for them to work together. And one, the argument we found was the, this invisible but very physical and uh, existing strata stratum in the underneath it's a gray zone is one 
a coal uh, body, you say that maybe? So it's like a one coal stratum yeah, body here. It's a huge one. It's uh, 180 kilometers long and 30 kilometers wide. On the north here, you see the Emshire Park. There you have the, the Ruhr, Ruhr region, very well known as industrial region, which means it's only one coal stratum for the, the whole region of the, the Ruhr here. And almost the same here, you have only one big coal stratum here. And we propose this element as the border of the, the development of the three national region. We, we, we ask them, are you okay if we consider this basis as the basis of uh, the, the development of an alternative metropolis, which is not, uh, the goal is not to densify the metropolis, the goal is to adapt the metropolis to this new condition without industry, with more nature. We could work together, Dutch, German and uh, Belgium people, uh, to develop it together. And they accept this idea because, not because it's an, an abstract thing, the opposite. They accept this because they have the same history. One, uh, Everyone, almost every family has a father or grandfather who worked, who used to work in the mine. Uh, sometimes it's also um, quite a dramatic history. So then it was very, they were very concerned about it, about this. That means with this so invisible element here, if we made a, a schematic uh, section on the, on the land, you have in the middle the the river, the mass, then the first settlements, and only during 100 years, the last 100 years, they transform completely the, the geography of the land. So they, it was a flat land, and suddenly they developed uh, slag heaps, open pits. I hope it's, 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 yeah. it's, <laughs> it's right. <laughs> Uh, and uh, so it's a new geography, so mines for sure, and we have to work with this. We can complain and say it's a, it's a pity, or we could say it's a new, it's a potential. We have to work with this. We have to work with this invisible basis, but crossing many borders, communal, communal or uh, the, the different countries, national borders, like here, you can see Germany, Netherlands, Belgium. And then we have, we cannot only work with the invisible, we have to work with elements, existing visible uh, uh, elements. And we have here a constellation of different things. We, it's like we register all the very important things. For example, the green elements here are the regional parks, natural parks, existing parks, it's not, nothing new, but you, the red are the city centers and, uh, and, and so on. And the idea is not only to, to analyze them, the idea is to give them like a program, a future. It's not only, uh, to, we don't have to be passive for, for sure, you have to develop actions ideas with together with the, the different people there, actors. And then we have to uh, connect them through two main roads. One is the metropolitan road, the red one is the uh, for the drivers and the, uh, the green one is the for bicycles, for, for example. The, the red one is connecting every city center. And the, uh, and the green one is uh, running along uh, the, the different uh, rivers. So the idea here uh, was not to develop, like in Paris in the 19th century, uh, like Haussmann with the, the views, like a Baroque uh, idea with, uh, with pictures showing what we, where we will go. It's, it's very difficult. The, the idea here is more to show um, the strategy. Yeah, so it's, we don't know exactly 
how it uh, will be. So it's, it's a master planning, speaking about connecting cities and main uh, regional park and main projects. Uh, so analyzing the main points and then speaking about urban day A, uh, something like that. So something in process. So connecting every city center. And this metropole, uh, metropolitan road is not for sure one road in one city. It's connecting cities, connecting completely different uh, sites, crossing uh, agrarian landscapes to reach uh, uh, an old mine or a new or a, a village, for example. That means we have to develop along the, the road here um, a design, a specific design to uh, to clarify the, um, the address of everyone. For the green one, it's ex exactly the same. All the, the natural parks, existing parks, have needs an address. It's very difficult today to, to find them. And we, so that's um, the main point here. And it's not only the idea to follow the, the rivers, but this uh, green road will also uh, connect with the uh, sport complex, uh, historical elements, and will connect also with, um, for sure, with the regional park, uh, which are, as I said, so a bit uh, maybe hidden today. And we have to develop signs, so like uh, structures to identify the, the entry of, the, of those parks. And those structures are also uh, uh, giving people a, a new point of view to, to develop the desire to, to go further, to see the site. And then we have a big master plan, a bit complicated to read it for us right now, today, but for the different Myers, they underscribe for the idea. And then now they are developing so leisure uh, or sometimes together uh, around the, uh, the slug hips. They are uh, developing like here in Germany uh, the university, uh, so a satellite of the uh, the main university of uh, Aachen, together with one also a point of view here. It was one of the first um, realization and the German minister in uh, the white shirt here so came to uh, to yeah for the inauguration I don't know the term yeah. <laughs> inauguration of this uh, first project that means it's okay to have a big master plan for a huge uh, territory but it's also very important to have several points which are uh, which are uh, developed very soon, yeah, so very directly, and uh, the Euro European uh, Union is also helping not only the big projects, the two roads, but uh, they start with 15 projects last year, like this one, and they will uh, continue with uh, 15 other projects. So that means, yeah, it's a connection between the surface lines and the points for sure like every time sometimes the the underground is the undersea which is important here it's in in the middle east in bahrain not so far from dubai for example and you know the how the, the they develop the, the region there here we were asked with different uh, french architects uh, so a big team with one uh, landscape architect and uh, several architects and urban designers to develop the north uh, coast of Bahrain here. And the way they do it, so uh, normally it's like that. So that's this, you see the normal coast and you see you can visualize the, the new part, which is uh, like a border. So going uh, so like an, a new element 
uh, w win, uh, so they win the piece of land in the in the sea. The, and they wanted to develop the same thing as this one here along the coast. But if you go there, you can you meet people living in small villages. You see the uh, like uh, nurseries with a lot of palm trees there. But also every one of them uh, is also a fisher. So he needs a direct access to the sea. That's, that's why we couldn't follow the, the idea of the, of the client there to develop a huge uh, North Bahrain uh, new town, so 2,000 till 3,000 hectares. But we propose to, to develop an archipelago a bit like in Dubai, but in Dubai they are designing this like a palm tree or like a, so it could be, a, I don't know, a banana or something like that. Uh, here, we, we, the idea was to, to reduce the land, so not 3,000 hectares, but only uh, 1,000 or 1,100 hectares. And to design the, the, the form of, of this, we, we had to uh, take care to the, the undersea level. We have also here topography, yeah? so with the deep blue means for sure, so uh, very sunken uh, level. And uh, this topography is because of the, the streams, for sure. And the streams are designing uh, the, this new archipelago. And then the, the winds are also are very important for the natural um, air conditions. And now they are uh, starting to develop the, the, the first archipelago with, uh, with Dutch uh, contractors, which are very uh, specialized with water, uh, <laughs> water problems. Boulders, they are the best in the world for sure. And then uh, we spoke about undergrounds, undersea. Sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes it's the top, for sure. Cornelia, <laughs> you know that very good. The top of the uh, visitor center of a botanical garden. But I saw also the um, in, uh, here you have a beautiful. Um, convention center with the nature in the, on the top of it, looking at the water. We start a garden, a French garden in French pavilion in the, in the, with, an, with Jacques Ferrier, architect for the expo in China, in uh, Shanghai, 2010. Uh, the idea from Jacques Ferrier was to have a, what is French? He, he told us, for me, a French pavilion has to be very cold. If, look, if you look at it from the outside and it's quite warm inside. Okay, then we did the inside, <laughs> the garden, uh, starting from the, the top of it and uh, going down along the facades. This is the, the, the competition uh, perspective, the view from the inside. For sure, it was also like a Belvedere, so it's, uh, Belvedere to see the, the skyline of, of uh, Shanghai. And this is the realized, quite quick, realized uh, pavilion with this garden looking at the, the river and the city. So almost a French, it's a, maybe a, 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 as the French garden, the French formal gardens as a reference for this for this part here, but also we, you can use it. It's for sure, it's a restaurant, a cafeteria. In this very dense uh, city of uh, Shanghai. But with the same ar architect, we are developing now uh, a station, a station which, uh, and together with the station here, uh, a new district, a business and a social uh, district here. We have different uh, big buildings there, but the station will be, in, it's, it is in, the, in Bretagne, uh, in Rennes, in, in France. And this station will be like uh, the bridge 
between two parts of the city of, of Rennes, which are not really together connected. So this green bridge will connect them. And also sometimes uh, if we are working in a very dense periphery, like here, and we are in the periphery of Paris, on the, on the north is per, uh, Paris with a ring. Here we are just, uh, it's one, uh, one of the entrance of Paris with a lot of traffic jam. We were asked to, you see the, the crossing point here, we, have, we had to, to solve it. It's an infrastructural problem. Then we were asked to not only to solve this infrastructural problem, but also to develop a master plan for around it, for a new district. And we had no, um, no space to develop, uh, so no parcel or not, no possibilities to develop a park or something yeah, like a piazza or for, for the, except the, the roundabout itself, the crossing points, and except also a new shopping mall, which is here in the, in the, in the north of this, uh, of this district. And the idea was to here to work with private uh, promoters to develop the shopping mall and on the roof of the shopping mall to ask them uh, to realize um, a park, a, a public park, which is today maintained by the city. So paid by, uh, so the private, uh, by the uh, shopping mall and maintained by, by the public, uh, by, the, by the city. So, First levels are the so is the garage, parking, and then you have the shopping mall, and on the top, the park. For sure, you have different chimneys, or so you need the air it has to, or everything has to go out on the top. The idea was to develop here um, vertical gardens around those technical elements. This is today uh, realized. Working with architects, it's, uh, we don't have a, a flat level, it's like an artificial topography with high points and uh, sometimes up, sometimes down. We have direct connections from the outside, the streets, to go up, steps or slopes, but no connection, direct, not direct connection with the, with the commercial, uh, with the shopping mall. We have to go outside, so it's day and night open for people living there. And then at the end, you have the you can see the point of view to the the site under construction today here, and the, this new uh, intersection, this new roundabout, which is not only for cars for the traffic but also it's thought also for pedestrians, so they can cross, go in the middle of it, and so here. So this is a shopping mall from the entrance, and this is this roundabout where we are trying to mix pedestrian and so, in, uh, in between the, the, the traffic and traffic jam. Sorry, that's in. Uh, um, sometimes we have to work with resilient landscapes, yes, yeah? so or industrial landscapes, like here in uh, one more time in uh, in Germany, Solferein mine, very important, very uh, iconic uh, architecture. Uh, at, at the late uh, period of the Bauhaus. Uh, here we, you can see this architecture, very very pure architecture, that with three materials at the same level, like your skin, almost abstract volumes here. And then the hundred hectares of the sulfurine mine, very sterile, so 
because of chemical products, so they, did, they didn't want to have here vegetation for sure. But you see also the beautiful sculpture, yeah, so industrial sculpture there. And now, if you wait, if you leave, uh, if you give time to the vegetation to come back, uh, they it do, it, it does, yeah. So it it come, it comes back. Here you see they call it in Germany uh, industry nature coming back here, and you you see also the, the architecture with the bridges, which were uh, for the coal for the transport of the coal, but now those bridges are for pedestrian. They are renovated and you can walk on the, on, up on the canopy. Yeah, you can see from above the big canopy uh, growing and growing every day in this big site, which is, if you don't do too much, it's already quite incredible as a, as a site, as an uh, as arch architecture and also nature. Ram Colas with uh, OMA uh, came here first to develop one master plan, uh, telling them to develop many, so three main points. One creative village on the top, on, on the north, one uh, museum uh, pole here, and also a new business district on the other, for the, the third pole. But the, the, the hall is now uh, recognized as, uh, natural, uh, as a world uh, heritage. So that means we don't have to touch anything. So keep everything like, like it is, even the rail tracks and, uh, and the floor. So then we, they organize a competition for landscape architects to connect everything there to, to be very careful. And here you have the yellow lines uh, crossing everything and the yellow, uh, the, the yellow lines are the rail tracks uh, rehabilitated as uh, paths yeah, as uh, pedestrian boulevards. It's a bit complicated, so then we, we had to, to develop like a, uh, a, a réseau. I cannot remember the name in English, but a, a net, a net of network. a network. So, thank you, <laughs> network of different uh, paths, and we had to open also the, this big site to the neighborhood here and work with vegetation, yeah? so the, the resilience. It's, it comes from itself, but you have to, to help it. If, you, if you, you want to, people to use it, you cannot leave it like that, like it is here on the left. You, ca you need also to make it a bit more transparent. That means to, to cut the, the first uh, stratum underneath, under the canopy or to, uh, in different parts uh, of the site, to, to let the, uh, the, the growth, uh, the growing growth, and to cut it every three years, for example. So you can see directly the, the time, the, the, this dimension of the site. And then, so this was one of the first sketch here, so the first collage the rail tracks as a main boulevard, then it's now realized. So you can, uh, it was the, the idea to walk from one point to, to another one here to reach uh, this museum here, which uh, used to be an industrial building renovated by uh, Rem Collas and OMA. And the idea was to develop here like a piazza uh, with a new stratum here, visible stratum, but this visible stratum had to integrate the, the rail tracks, the, the, the old ones. And uh, Rem Collas had the idea to, uh, to develop here a gangway, like the, the bridges, like the existing bridges he added 
uh, one, uh, the glass one, the gangway, and you can see it here. So the, the gangway as a, as the main entrance of the building of the the new museum. The, the, the light, lightnings of the piazza uh, integrated in the floor and around it the creative village you have the new design school of uh, Sana which is which becomes to be every day uh, more an iconic uh, uh, element of architecture, modern architecture but the, the resilience uh, is also could be also in, a, in an old uh, in a former uh, airport area like here in Morocco in Casablanca so uh, the, the dimension is you see the uh, the pist the pist is uh, I don't know the land the runway, the runway thank you <laughs> the runway so two kilometers about two kilometers long so it's, it's a square two kilometers two times kilometers uh, Here, we, for sure, it's already uh, so. We, you have several districts around it. You have to connect it around with the surroundings. Very dense city, but uh, uh, not so far also from the from the from downtown. And here, it was quite for sure. It's an airport, quite sterile. The idea here is to uh, to work like. For the, in the on the planet, you know, you have the, the tectonic and the moving elements. Yeah? So here, the idea was not to to break everything, but only to to develop like joints between different platforms, which remains remain here, and in the, those uh, and to break the the existing uh, soil to make it, uh, to bring again, uh, to let the water, uh, f the rainwater, and to, to provoke uh, more humidity, yeah? so in this sunken, in those sunken, sunken uh, network. And so then, as a picture, the idea here is to, you can see here the different platforms, the white platforms, which are the places to develop the, the new quarters, new districts, different ones. You can see directly the, the different phases almost of this project and the, like different steps of the projects and in between a green structure. So that means here we, may, we need the green structure as a, the first step of the, the big one the big, uh, the global district here, and we are starting to work with nurseries there, uh, with a with a strategy for the plants, different plants, to organize the, yeah, the in between space and which are the the structure of the of the future district with a one station. We will have here the speed train in Morocco, uh, connecting every big uh, cities of Morocco, and the main station will be in the, the, at the edge between the, this district and almost in the middle of the park. Here, this is the existing place. You see the, the mosque, and almost uh, there, and it will be uh, the, the new uh, district there, so with the, the uh, runaway, the run, yeah, the runaway, <laughs> the runaway. <laughs> in the middle. So with the, we, uh, for sure, you, you, we can keep some main elements of the runaway, the, the numbers written on the floor, for example, and then it's a big park with uh, connecting. Uh, fresh gardens yes, as a structure. And then, at least, several projects about the same idea. So the water in the city, I've seen many uh, 
beautiful uh, examples here in uh, in Vancouver of the nature in the in the middle of the city. Uh, we are developing also the, this ideas of this hydrological uh, city, but the hydrology could be also placed also in a very small uh, piece of land, like here in a parking lot in the south of France, in a, it's a small valley here with the existing uh, hotels. But if you want to develop this small valley, you have to, to understand that this site is not on, only the valley, the vis visible valley, this site is huge. The green area here means if the rain uh, fall, uh, falls in, in the north of this, uh, the, the mountains, the water will flow um, uh, till the valley at the end. So that means we have to take, to take care, to analyze uh, the, um, the water. Yeah? So uh, the, the, uh, the the, the follow, we have to follow the water. So this is the, the place here. So we developed like um, like a channel, uh, you know, something around it. So uh, around the parking lot to accept the water, and uh, we developed a zone in between zone at the end of the of the parking lot just before the three uh, existing hotels, like a reservoir, uh, lifted down, pla piazza, green one. And the idea here, we ha you have a natural slope to go to the sea and to reduce the speed of the rainwater. The idea here is to have different steps uh, the, the parking lot is divided in different steps and uh, the slope is of those, those steps is uh, inverse against the slope, the natural slope. So in, with this technique we can reduce this, uh, we can stop the water, reduce the speed uh, of the, of the rainwater. This is the existing uh, small river now when it's dry river almost dry river in summer but only three weeks a year it's full full of water the site is full of water the green area before the hotels is the the reservoir piazza the s different steps with the vegetation and the people living around this small valley here, the different houses. And the idea is to, even if it's a parking lot, it has to be so, uh, convenient or it has to be uh, uh, friendly for people going down. People living there, even in, uh, during the winter, you, are, you have nobody, no cars in the, in the parking lot, but it has to be a nice place for them to go down to, to the sea, for pedestrians. That's why we need also to work with materials, with plants, uh, sen sensuality, to go down as a, as a pedestrian, go through the parking lot, which is a place also. It's not only a function, it's a place to be or to cross to the water, the blue uh, Mediterranean, 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 uh, uh, see, the, if you cross the, the reservoir, it's for sure it's lifted up. You need the small pedestrian bridges. The same idea if we work for a district. Uh, here it's in Paris, in, uh, in Boulogne, so very near, so direct at the neighbor uh, city of uh, Paris here, along the Seine. You have the, the former um, uh, Renault um, industrial area, uh, which, will, which is turning into a urban quarter now, a urban district. And traditionally in Paris, we have big parks, 
connected to the river, like Parc de Saint-Cloud, Parc de l'Île Saint-Germain, Parc André Citroën, well known. And this one, Parc du Trapèze or Parc de Boulogne Billancourt, will be the, the future one. And also in the islands, they will, they are, they developed already with uh, Michel Devigne uh, a park. But our park is here. It's like a canal. It's like it's a linear park, like a canal, connected at the end with a river. And the middle, if we make a, a cross section in, in this park, the, the middle part is lifted down. It's, it's really like a canal, so it, 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 we can use it like a canal. That, that means the, it could be flooded sometimes. On both parts, you have walls to, to retain the water. That means we, you have different water levels. Could be the permanent water level is, is quite, it's not very big. And sometimes, every 50 years, more or less, it could be full of water. And then, in this case, uh, we, we, it will be connected with the Seine, with the river. So the perspectives of the, the for, for the, uh, it's just a competition, one more time, a competition. You, you know, in Europe, we, we have to. <laughs> it's, not, uh, it's not our decision. We have to. Uh, to win first the competition and then to uh, then we are able to realize we are allowed to realize uh, the park and here so that means to uh, the flood is because we are we have a, in this district new district every block has to uh, collect maybe to yeah, to collect the rainwater from the roofs, you, you, you see the different blue points, and then the, the water is uh, guided visually. Visually, it's not we don't have pipes there. It's visual. The water uh, goes visual, so in open air system uh, to the to the park. So this is the permanent water in the park. This is. Uh, one of the streets with the, uh, it's like the threshold of the building. You have the main entrance of the different main entrance of the, the building, and uh, the water, the rainwater has to flow here along to the park. This is the park. The, so here with the big uh, building from Jean Nouvel here at the end, at one end. The, the, this is the, the dry part of the park, which, which could be filled uh, with water, like small uh, intimacy sometimes. Uh, yeah, so that is, this was Boulogne. And if we are working in a new, for a new district, it's another example here in uh, Marseille. It's Euromed uh, 2. It's the second part of the renovation of the arbor here. Um, we had to find one idea, one argument, how to develop the district. So how to structure with, uh, with the landscape or with the hydrological landscape, the district. And could the landscape this time, once again, could be, could it be a leading landscape for the district? And uh, sorry, it's a, it's a mistake in the. So I will, I will. Yes, it's here. We are still in Marseille. Could it be a leading landscape? And to do this, we have to see uh, the, the horizon of the, this beautiful site of Marseille. You have a lot of uh, mountains around it. And instead of looking at the mountains and staying in, the, in, in Marseille along the sea, we went to, 
to the mountains, looking from the mountains down to Marseille. And then uh, there you have different canyons. That means it's not it's a dry landscape, but it rains and it's very when it rains it's very strong and brutal and uh, with a lot of erosion that's why of the canyons you have canyons here and we decided to follow the water to the sea so to draw it on the, this map to have really the uh, to know exactly where the water has to go to flow and we decided to to use this uh, uh, this water line as uh, the main uh, park for the city and this park will be the connecting point between the new district and the old part of Marseille and this park will cross different main street historical streets this park will also reach the the new building from Zahatid for sure so it's very iconic building there for, for Marseille. We'll cross also the, the viaduct, the main uh, freeway, highway, which is lifted up here as a viaduct already today. It's like that, and it's beautiful uh, Belvedere. For if you drive and come there, and you are directly in the middle of the beautiful uh, site. And uh, this green line, green and blue line, will really uh, connect everything there. Uh, and that means that, that the, the people, the future inhabitants of this district, they will uh, live uh, not so far from directly on the park or not so far. They can go out of their home and follow the park if they follow the park in one direction, they will reach the natural mountains, and the other direction, they will reach uh, the sea. And also the idea is that this existing uh, viaduct, so highway, uh, because of the topography of the site, you have like a natural balcony today, but you, it, it's a, you are disturbed by this viaduct. So the idea here is to uh, embody it, maybe to, to associate the viaduct with the topography, with the plateau. And at the edge of the plateau, the, the, the pavement of the city will go as far as possible on the roof of the viaduct, of the future viaduct, which will have a lateral uh, perception, lateral view of the, of the sea, but with a with a top, with a with a roof. That means the city will come as close as possible uh, in the direction of the harbor here, with the new terrace, new pedestrian walk, looking at the sea. This is the basins in the normal season, dry season, same place with high water. And the, the big site here, so the connecting different things, natural parts, the old city, the, the new part, the new district. And the last uh, example today is uh, what we are doing now, it's we are there, we have many uh, questions right now in France uh, related to rivers, big rivers. We, the cities are trying to work together, for example, in Toulouse, in the southwest of France. The city of Toulouse is working with, surround, with the, the periphery, with different cities in the periphery, and they ask themselves, if we are working together, what is the right scale for us? The right scale, if we speak about uh, open spaces, or it's about it's a geography, the ge ge geographical, mm -hmm. geographical scale, the river. And the river has many uh, faces. It, it could be 
like here, natural uh, aspect. So we will, for sure, we will uh, protect those beautiful landscapes and uh, the cities together are already today buying uh, lands to protect, to be sure that this uh, natural landscape will be protected. Sometimes it's natural and mixed with industry. Sometimes it's totally like here in the middle of uh, Toulouse. It's a, it's a very historical, uh, very dense uh, city, but uh, we have to make the connection with the water a bit better than it is today. But it's quite a beautiful city. Yeah, sometimes we have to work also with the quite complex situation with the water is uh, with different water of uh, different levels of water so with bridges infrastructures that's a beautiful project we are starting uh, on right now so this is also a natural part with the uh, confluence and the idea is one more time to work here with different strata, for sure, to, to identify the different parts of the river, the city center, for sure, but we have the natural part, you have uh, different places, they have to be identified, but like uh, Olmsted could say, like a park system, different, different parks connected, the one to, uh, to the other. Then we have to analyze and make proposal for the different dikes or different protection, different uh, embankments, different access to the water for the city. The idea here is to have new gates because it's sometimes not very easy for city centers, of, especially of the periphery, to reach the water. It's not direct. So you, we need like a rhythm of new gates, uh, transversal, going uh, as directly as possible to the water. But those new gates needs also a, a huge, um, a very long um, so promenade along the water, which is not the case today. So we could really develop this uh, network of uh, paths and for also for um, bicycles, horses, pedestrian, as everything possible. That's what we are right now doing, and not only developing the this along the water or between water and city centers, but like a network connecting also the tram, buses and everything. So it's, it, it has to function at the end uh, very normally. So today is the river not really part of the city. The, today is the feeling of people they, because they are afraid uh, of the flood which, which, is, which, could, which could come every year. They have two or three weeks flood. That's why they are a bit they stay away from this, but slowly. So we are developing now really this new network, connecting again the city with the river. And uh, in the river, you have big uh, islands like this one, existing one for sure, as big as Central Park in New York. And uh, this is the, the way we are developing. This is a master planning. And now with the different cities, we are organizing different competitions for landscape architects, urban designers and architects. That's, um, that's the way we are working uh, today. So to actually, uh, so that means different scales. That means an open system, really, so open, uh, open to, to other people, clients, but also open to other offices, like here, this, this time. So 
that's very interesting to work in a in connection with very different kind of people, of specialists. I don't think we are specialists, we are generalists, <laughs> but we need to work with very different uh, professionals, different actors, with people. Uh, here we are working also with uh, inhabitants to, for the program. So what are the, the different places in this city? Uh, what do they need, really? And what is existing and how could we develop along this uh, very big uh, network? So that's that was that's all today for the, for the landscape in uh, motion and for the leading landscapes or what what could landscape bring to our cities? Thank you very much.